This episode is brought to you by United Airlines. When you want to make the most of your vacation, book with United. They're an airline that cares about your travels as much as you do. United is transforming the flying experience with Bluetooth connectivity, screens, power at every seat, and bigger overhead bins to help fit everyone's bag. And with their app, you can skip the bag check line, get live updates, and more. Change the way you fly. Book your next trip today at united.com. Want to shop Walmart Black Friday deals first? Walmart Plus members get early access to our hottest deals. Join now and get 50% off a one-year annual membership. Shop Black Friday deals first with Walmart Plus. See terms at walmartplus.com. Dr. Luck. Stand aside, nurse. I'm Dr. Homebrew. Hey, what's up, everybody? Dr. Homebrew. I literally, again, once again, forgot what show I'm doing. It's Dr. Homebrew. It's been a while, but we're back in the studio here, and we are talking a bunch of beers today. We're going to jibber-jabber a little bit. We're going to be like Mr. T. We're going to be jibber-jabbering a little bit about some judging stuff. I know Brian Shard just came back from GABF, so I want to hear that experience. Brian Cooper said something in the chat that I didn't notice before. What's to talk about something? Yep. In CHF? No, no. That was last time. Okay. All right. I can't CHC. keep up. Okay. I can't it's, keep up with your whirlwind tours. The biggest homebrew competition in California. Is it? Yeah. I don't know, man. It used to be called Start and Grove. You know, it's kind of historic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to jibber jabber and we're going to talk about that. But before we get into all that mess, we have. Once again, more non-alcoholic beers to drink. And, and I know what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, God, here we, this is going to be another friggin'. Now it's a whole thing. Now it's the non-alcoholic Dr. Homebrew segments and, and all this kind of crap. That's not my fault. There's just so many non-alcoholic beers out there. I'm fascinated by them. And I want to talk about them. Last time, the last major revelation that we had for uh, non-alcoholic beers was actually what I'm drinking right now, Sierra Nevada Trail Pass IPA. Oh. Which has sort of become my go-to now. I love this beer. But what I found at the store the other day, and I gave you two boys my last cans of this beer, is 805 from Firestone Walker. But they call it 805 because it's zero alcohol. And I, I think that marketing wow, wow. Is, is brilliant. I think it's great. It's so cool. I, I think it's great, too. Yeah, it's cute. Um, so we're going to be drinking that today. The boys are. I've, I've had enough of it. I can remember uh, off the top of my head because I'm, <laughs> I'm not that smart. Um, but I thought it was interesting. I thought it'd be interesting to, to dive into that because Firestone Walker, anytime one of the big guys has a non-alcoholic beer, you know that it's, it's, a, it's a segment that other craft brewers should be paying attention to. You yes. know, and Sierra Nevada is one thing. Firestone Walker is, is a different kind of thing. It's not on a different level. It's just a different animal, I think, right? Like, I expected Sierra Nevada to be one of the first big boys to kind of get into it, but Firestone Walker? That's huge to me. So I had yeah, to pick definitely. some up and we had to talk about it. So why don't you boys crack that open? Like I said, I'm not going to be... I meant to go to the store today. I actually forgot. Um, I don't know if something happened last mm-hmm. night. I just kind of didn't really... I forgot about a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know what it was. And It's um, just that time. I don't know. I've, I've been like a day late and a dollar short the last two weeks i don't know what i'm doing i didn't get the beers down to coop first thing monday mm. morning or first thing this morning and I, I i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> they're chilled chilled in my fridge today all right you know yeah the thing about this and a movement it's a movement and if you you know it's like if you ignored the movement towards more modern ipas and we're stuck in the hop wars of the you know the early aughts yeah you won't be selling a lot of beer anymore <laughs> yeah, or like if if you're like a West Coast IPA, that's a fad. I'm still making quad Belgian beers. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. my thing, and that's <laughs> I'm gonna die on that hill. Everyone wants that, or you know what I mean? Uh, right. Yeah, I I agree. the The tricky thing about it, and we still need to get someone to tell us how to do it on a homebrew level. Jamil sort of did, but I want to know what's going on. Um, yeah, agreed. But it, it, I, I, it, it's trickier to do it's an extra step or two or three in the process as a craft brewer so i get the trepidation or the 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 hesitation i guess to uh 
to get in there and, and, and start farting around. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think everybody, if you can do it, I think you should be doing it, even on a small scale. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a worthwhile endeavor. You'll hear me say this uh, you know, before. You've heard me say it before. You'll hear me say it again. Every craft beer bar should have at least a couple non-alcoholic beers. I, I like them. And, uh, you know, other people like them too. They're going to go out, they're going to pay $7 for this. They're just yeah. going to. So, you know, you're dumb if you're not serving it at your beer bar. <laughs> can, can we get board certified in NA beer as doctor's homebrew? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know, man. That'd be sick. I would love that. Can we record our <laughs> next show on location at like, you know, Sierra Nevada where they make the, uh, their NA? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. That'd be fun. I mean, I'm sure that I could, I'm sure I could talk to Byron and see if we can, uh, see if we can get someone on to tell us how to do it. But then again, it, it's not really telling us how to do it so much as how they do it. I don't know. I'll, I'll reach out to him. Uh, you know, I don't know if we could record live, but maybe we could do a, like a trip up there. Um, mm. but it's three hours from my house, you know, and I you know, stay the night, the whole thing. And then they're going to want to <laughs> hang out and party and, I don't do that anymore. So, you know, whatever. We'll see. Uh, sounds terrible. It is. It really is, Dang. man. I tell you, being health conscious, it sucks. Anyway, let's get into this beard. You guys have it poured? You ready? Ready to talk about it? I'm ready to I'm talk. cracking uh, in here. Man. All right. Well, Char, then you start us off, man. What do you think? Yeah. So this is a, a blonde ale. And, uh, you know, again, I, th I think with, I think as we're evolving our, our, the way we taste in a beers, I think we should do two things. One, compare it to the style, because that's what we do. We're a style show. But two, I think we should determine if it tastes good for a non-alcoholic beer. You know, I think because I think they're different. I, I, you know what I mean? I think there's three points. Non-alcoholic beer yeah. to the style and does and do the two intersect at all? And then if so, what? So, you know, off off rip. How is it as a blonde ale and how is it as a non-alcoholic beer? That's that, that's I guess what I'm getting at. Yeah, you know, I think this is, you know, 805 is is pretty ubiquitous. I don't know about around the country, but it's pretty ubiquitous in California, and it's pretty good. It's a hoppy blonde. It's a you know, moderate bitterness. It's, you know, more than just a lager. It is kind of what you'd think a good blonde ale ought to, ought to be. And this I, this is my first time having the 805. It'll hold the can up. Yeah, people can see the 805 on the label. Uh, and, you know. It's it's good. It's not identical to the normal 805. Yeah, I, I think the the aroma is the aroma is interesting. It's there's not a ton of aroma to this beer. It's maybe a slight sweetness. There's a little malt, but again, this is a let's assume this was a a, a blonde, a regular 805. Yeah, this wouldn't have a lot of aroma anyway. You know, blondes are not giant beers that have aroma that just leaps into your into your sinuses. Yeah, it eight oh five for my recollection. I haven't had one in a while. Um, it, it it's it's it maybe has like a sweet aroma, but that's kind of it. There's really not a whole lot going on in it. Yeah, no, uh, agreed. You know, the flavor. I, I actually really like this beer. I I think I might like it more than regular alcoholic eight oh five. You know, it's. It's to me. It's maybe a little bit less carbonated. It's definitely less bitter. Uh, it's got a really interesting sort of malty character. You know, actually, it is pretty well carbonated. It's eight oh five always comes across to me as being super highly carbonated. So maybe this is just not as super. Mm. But I don't get any of the odd. You know, even the best examples of any beer that we've had on this show, there's always a little bit of of sweetness or something that makes may not be off putting, but it reminds you, Hey, this is an NA beer. And I don't really get that from this. I get malt. I don't get any of the residual sweetness that you, you can sometimes or a sweet perception of sweetness from an NA beer. It's not darker. This is the same, same colors in 805. Yeah. Right. Some of the processes, if you're going to heat it up, uh, you're going to try to you know, thermally drive off some of the alcohol. That will sometimes change the color of of a beer to be a, a darker, uh, be perceived more darkly than than you might want. I, I'm actually really impressed with this. You know, I I it's Firestone Walker, and we're saying they they always do a good job 
on on beer. You know, there's some some of theirs I may not like as well as others, but it's a matter of personal taste. I'm not a fan of Wookie Jack. <laughs> a lot of people really think Wookie Jack is the best. I, I think it's tastes like feet. I think <laughs> it's kind of like it's the, probably mosaic hops. Uh, and I, I haven't had it for a while because they haven't made it for a while. But, you know, they're the standard that Firestone Walker sets is it's like Sierra. It's really high. Yeah. And if you're going to get something from them, you may not like the style. It may not be to your taste, but it's going to be made technically proficiently. Yes. And I, I think this definitely is. And this, you know, I, in all honesty, JP, you handed me this and I'm like, yeah, great. 805. It's, again, it's not, I, I will drink it. You know, it's not my favorite. <laughs> If I'm at a party or something and there's cans of 805, I'll drink it. I'll be happy. Look, here's the I'm thing. I'm not going to seek it out. I, I'm the same way. I, I think this yep. is this is a beer. And, you know, I think Matt came on when they kind of released it. He, You know, this is the beer. It's a basically a party beer to replace the, you know, Mexican light lagers uh, that the Central Valley was sort of like drinking. Mm-hmm. And so that's what it is. This is the beer that you bring to a party. This is 100%. Exactly. It's light. You can drink a lot of it. And there you go. So I'm the same way. Yeah. I saw it on the shelf. I'm like. Do I really look if if I'm if I'm completely fair and honest, the I, the packaging I didn't like. It's this weird silver color. and like this kind of yeah. I don't really like it, but I'm going to try it. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. And uh, I'm 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 glad that you that you did. And it seems that you enjoy it a little bit more than you thought you would. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot more than I, I thought I would. And this is one, you know, my we've done a lot of N.A. beers on this show. And my favorite to date has always been the Guinness Zero. Really? And I think that probably remains at my top. This might be, this is right at, this is either tied for number one or it's right underneath that Guinness Zero. Wow. This this is just really, you know, I, I could drink, if you hadn't told me this was an NA, I could drink a pint of this and I would not, I might be like, huh, this 805 is a little bit less hoppy, a little, a little bit less hop character than I expect. Yeah. But I wouldn't think it's N.A. Yeah, true. Yeah, so that's just uh, just kind of how it is. I, I like it a lot. All right, excellent. Excellent. Coop, what do you just, think, man? I was just looking up the calories, and uh, yeah, this one has like 60 calories. It's even lower calorie-wise than the Heineken 00. zero. And the Guinness, for that matter, Hiking Zero Zero is sixty nine calories. Nice. Guinness is uh, sixty nine, dude. Seventy one. Um, so yeah, I mean, just from that standpoint, and it doesn't taste too light. Yeah, the nose, I'm not getting a lot of fruitiness, and I think that you know the the regular eight oh five isn't a intensely like fruity beer. Anyway, it plays a little more like a lager than a, you know, it's 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 marketed as a blonde ale, but it, it plays more like, you know, a summer lager, kind of a light light beer it's it's it may just be a cool fermented um ale yeah uh you know but it's it's always crisp and refreshing and 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 not too much standing out beside a little malt a little little bit of hop but um yeah this one it's very very clean and uh or yeah compared you know to the, the heineken zero zero i would say it's just as as clean it doesn't have any of those odd uh, flavors that you get in some other um, NA beers. It's just very smoothly drinkable. You hardly miss the alcohol, just like a well-crafted NA beer. And um, it's nice and light. So you, yeah, you can drink a lot of it and yeah, never get a buzz, obviously, but um, and that's that's fine. Here's what I here's what I got out of it. I I, I agree with what you guys are saying. For me, it was a little more fruity. Than 805 and 805 can be fruity in the in flavor, not aroma, really. Um, so, I, you know, I, I don't know what that what that is, but to me, this was like kind of more of an intense, intense fruitiness in the flavor. And I don't know if it's uh, it's like a yeast character. Um, and I don't know if it's maybe, you know, I think that flavor is in 805. And I wonder if whatever process they do sort of like focuses that a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't mind it. Question: The best ones that you know usually have some, you know, have a uh, a yeast fermentation going on, and they get, you know, they might get some more fruitiness in this compared to the regular one. I don't know. I'm not getting a massive fruitiness though, but there is an interesting aroma in there that's a little. Um, it's different, you know, towards the fruit side of things. Yeah. It's, um, 
I, I find that weird. Like lightly, you know, the maltiness is just a light kind of bready, uh, grainy thing, but it's not like light lager territory. It's more like like bread crust or like a richer kind of bread thing, which is really nice. Yeah. The little fruitiness, there's really not much hop in the nose or the flavor here and low, low bitterness. So as a Blondale, kind of overall, what would you guys give this beer? Wow. As a blonde ale, so a blonde ale should be, you know, an easy drinking, approachable, malt oriented American craft beer. This is meets all of those things, often with interesting fruit, hop, or character malt notes. Uh, well balanced and clean. Is a refreshing pint without aggressive flavors. I would say this this matches that description very well. The color is right. It's nice and light, nice and clear. Um, even has, you know, decent head um sticking around lace you know um lacing a glass a little bit it's it's a pretty beer yeah and it's soft and, and delicate i think i would rate it really well if i was you know presented with this as a blonde ale, although the the alcohol being missing would maybe throw me <laughs> well, for a little loop if you were if it was in a flight of you know seven blonde ales in the middle yeah. and had no alcohol all of a sudden i would hope you'd probably notice that but <laughs> would you notice uh, that? Do you think? Because uh, I'm sitting here going like, what? I, I, I would. I don't think I would notice that. I, don't I think know. I would pick you up don't. on other flavors that I equate or attribute to non-alcoholic beers, rather than having the 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 absence of the alcohol be noticeable. Yeah, I, I wish I had a eight, regular 805 here. I know, side by side. But, yeah, um, it's so rare that we get to do that. Should have thought of that. The, yeah, you know, it's a light-bodied beer, but it's not water. And this beer does have a little body to it. It's not, you know, so like just watery seeming that it just, you know, um, is it, it feels like water, it tastes like watery, and it's not any of those things. It has plenty of flavor. Yeah. And um, yeah, these guys, they did a good job with that. All right. So give me a number. Come on. You're dancing around. Oh. <laughs> a number. Yeah. Give me a number. Come on. 32. Okay. You go go for as a blonde ale, yeah. you know, thirty six. I don't. Know. It's fine. It's <laughs> very good. It's just missing the alcohol. Okay, yeah, Char, I, what I, do would, you think? I would agree with that. I, I would agree with you know, at thirty five, thirty six on this. You know, there's not much to uh, a blonde ale. You know, it's it, it's there are so many blonde ales that I think we we've all had that have been underwhelming at at best. And eight oh five does a good job at being what it is and being still having some flavor having some hops it's not a thing you're going to ever point to and say this is my favorite beer ever uh <laughs> if you, you imagine if you if you're a beer judge or something but it's always reliable it's always good and i think this you know on the any this it, it's not identical to the 805 with alcohol but it's good it's good for what it is yeah. and I, I actually like it quite a bit yeah i agree i'd give it a 32 yeah. Uh, because the cans that I got were kind of fruity. They were like oh, a little too much fruitiness for me, but that's okay. That's just me. I mean, yeah, on a judging sheet, I might say, you know, add a little, just a little more hop to, you know, to balance the malt that's there. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's, it's nicely awesome. presented, very clean. Hell easy yeah. to drink. I love that. All right. Well, there you go. That's our little eight Oh five segment. Eight zero five. I, I love it. I think the play on words is cute. Uh, they did a great job, and you know, of all, and I was actually surprised that they did 805 as their first non-alcoholic beer, because I, I feel like that's a brand you don't fuck with. You don't want to change it, or like I feel like from a brand recognition and marketing perspective, I feel like that would be something you don't want to adjust or duplicate and ch- and change with the same. I, I don't know. I feel like there's a marketing thing. Um, the popularity of it though it's it's instantly right. marketable so if they gave it a different name it's, it's our joe yeah. joe bob yeah and they beer. <laughs> i agree and it's also you know this is this is and to your point jp it's probably why this is made so well and i bet they spent a significant amount of time and money yeah. getting this oh, to the taste like this of course they, they didn't just half-ass you know, get some de-alcoholizer and something. Let's oh, pour some in here and see what happens. I everyone's process is different. Whatever they're doing, we'll never know. <laughs> it's yeah. it's going to be super well guarded. We'll never find out what that is. And whatever that process is, it's you know, freaking genius. They did a fantastic job. Yeah, it's good There's stuff. There's an article on uh, hopscouters.com where where Matt says we've tasted and analyzed 805 Blondale's appeal exhaustively. 
over the past 10 years, and we know all of the key elements that customers love in that beer. And we wanted to capture these elements in a non-alcoholic version closely. We worked hard, nailed it, and now we're off to the races. We've got something here that can compete with anything in the non-alcoholic space, and I'm pretty stoked about it. So Easily. Yeah, 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 for sure. This yeah. is right up there with Heineken Double Zero. And, yeah. and mm-hmm. you know, Trail Pass. I, I'm liking Trail Pass because there's, there's more of that hop to it. Um, yeah. you know, so there's something there that makes me, you know, tricks my brain, but, uh, yeah, at a party all day long. All right. We've yeah. praised them enough. Let's take a break. <laughs> We're going to come back. I want to hear about your guys' judging experiences at JBF and whatever the acronym Brian Cooper said. I don't really remember it. And, uh, we're going to come right back here on Dr. Holbrew. Don't go anywhere. Um, thank you. Want to shop Walmart Black Friday deals first? Walmart Plus members get early access to our hottest deals. Join now and get 50% off a one-year annual membership. Shop Black Friday deals first with Walmart Plus. See terms at walmartplus.com. What's up, homebrewers? Hey, let me ask you a question. You spend a lot of time making your beer taste the way you want it to, right? Some of you even send beers in to Dr. Homebrew for feedback. Well, the next logical step in your creativity is to craft some labels for those beers. And there's nobody better at creative labels than Grog Tag. Their easy-to-use designs let you turn out some pretty amazing stuff like labels, bottle caps, coasters, even six-pack carriers with minimal effort on your part. They have a range of label sizes that fit any vessel you can think of. Bottles, cans, growlers, kegs. GrogTag has you covered. Head over to grogtag.com today and check out their line of amazing, fully customizable templates and get your beer looking its best. Grog Tags are water-resistant, reusable, and will have your naked bottles looking great in no time. That's grogtag.com and be sure to use code BNARMY at checkout to save 10% on your order. All right, thanks for joining us, or thanks for sticking around, I guess I should say, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Dr. Homebrew. We're going to be talking to Brian Shar a little bit about his time at GABF. Last yeah. time we heard from the man, he was going to be packing the next day to get ready or whatever to uh, go to GABF and uh, judge with the big boys. And was this, I forget, was this your first time doing finals or not? This was my first time ever doing finals. Okay. And yeah. my second time doing GABF. How was, how, what's the, there's so many questions. What's the difference in beer levels between your first time and then now the, in the finals? Like what's that, what's that caliber of, of deliciousness like? You know, what's fascinating is aside from the fact that you're, you're judging in Denver and not out at the warehouse, uh, in, in Louisville, I guess they call it Louisville and not Louisville, Colorado. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, it's about the same. I thought I always had the impression that that you're out in Louisville and you're judging. And that's kind of what would be a first round for like a homebrew competition. And then the best ones move forward. And that's not entirely the case. You know, we had one of the hilarious things that I'm not uh, I I don't think I'm, I'm saying anything I shouldn't be saying. You know, there were a ton of IPAs and hazy IPAs. And pretty much everybody had the judge at least one session or one flight of hazy IPA and or IPA of some kind. Okay. So that, that was cool. So you, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's, uh, three, there's essentially three rounds in, uh, in GABF. So you have like the first round, which is like, you know, any homebrew competition or anything else you've got, you know, say a hundred entries, 200 entries, and you part those out into flights and then you judge those, uh, you know, this year it was all electronic judging, which was nice. You brought your laptop, Oh, and you typed. Finally. There was no writing. Yeah, dude. And it's so much easier to just type and you know press some buttons for things than it is to sit and you know we've all gotten so used to typing as opposed to writing. Uh, it's yeah. it's a significantly faster, significantly easier. Uh, so that it, it's easier to kind of keep track of of the different beers in a flight that way as well. The way they have their software set up. So that that's cool. So then, like essentially, the top three of those top two will go on to the the second round and the second round so each table it's like the big eight top tables you have at any hotel ballroom type thing for a wedding reception or anything else right we've all been to to those those events so 
you've got uh Actually, these would be like a six tops. So you have six judges at each table. So for like a normal round, you have arbitrarily pick, okay, three and three for who's going to be doing a flight. For the the second round, there is, you know, the whole table does uh, the same thing, right? And it's, uh, am I confusing? No, um, second round, you're, you're, you're Take the bag. You're getting like a flight, but then what you're picking are the ones that are going to go going to go on to the final round, right? So you might get you might have six, you might have eight, you might have ten samples. You're picking the, you know, three, you know, two, three, four that you think are going to move on. The final round, the whole table, all six people get the same, the same beer. So it's like a in a way, it's like a mini best of show. Okay. So you're going to have anywhere from, you know, six to you know five five six. Up to, up to possibly ten, but I think we only had at most maybe like an eight for a uh, for the final round. And then at that point, it's all about you know you're you're not trying to write some sort of detailed description of what it is. You're picking out what you think are the essentially the the gold, silver, bronze for that category, and you have the whole table because I mean it is. I mean people spend a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of money to get their beers in GABF. And you want to be sure that when you're getting to that metal round, that you have, you know, consensus among you know, six different people and not just, you know, a couple of guys who think something is good or, or not. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it, it's fun. It, it's always, it's, it's always kind of cool because I, I, I had to head home uh, Friday. I went to GABF that Thursday night and left the, the next afternoon. Uh, and the, the uh, Saturday was when the, the medals were given out. But I, I pulled up the PDF. I was curious what some of these were. And I think most of them for the metal rounds I did were from breweries I'd never heard of and places I'd never been, which was really cool. <laughs> that's nice. It's not just the same people that are winning, you know, year in, year out. Although that's always kind of cool when you know, brewers can manage to consistently win year after year uh, in, a, in a competition that huge. Yes. So, no, that was uh, it, it was it was a great time. I, I really enjoyed doing it and I would do it again. Excellent. I love that. The, uh, I, I got, so you get the judge with, you know, each day your judge or each, each morning, each afternoon, you kind of switch tables and meet different people. And sometimes you end up meeting people uh, or judging with people you already know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Herendu and John Watson from Doe's were there. I didn't get the judge with them. Oh, that's cool. But, uh, it was cool. It was Herendu's first GABF. So it was really cool to uh, kind of bump into him uh, at, at the judging. That was pretty awesome. Uh, and then you get to judge with, uh, people like Dick Cantwell. And I got to I got to sit down next to Dick Cantwell one morning, and I was trying not to just fanboy out. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think I've met him in passing once yeah. or twice, but he did just such such a nice guy, and he's he's so nice and so chock full of knowledge. He's somebody that you just when he starts talking, you just shut the hell up and listen because he's just dropping gold. Like pretty much everything coming out of his mouth is just a nugget of of incredible brewing wisdom. Yeah. Uh, so you get to meet folks like that. Uh, you know, there's uh, people that you, you probably will never see again, but also pretty much everyone there is super nice. So I think it's a lot of people want to judge that. And if there's assholes, they don't get invited back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no, no need to put up with any of that kind of behavior. So, but it, it was just, you know, it was fantastic to get to meet people, uh, you know, had a, had a great time. GABF itself, Right, so you get free a free ticket for the all three nights, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, of GABF is is and you also get a little travel stipend, which which is nice. Ooh. But it's kind of a thank you for judging. It's like seven hundred bucks, so that's really nice because that covers the airplane ticket and some of the hotel. So it's not like you're spending a ton of money you know out of pocket to to travel to do it. Yeah, uh, GABF was a lot different than in the past. Uh, and I, I, I kind of liked it. They had different theme areas, uh, which were, you know, the theming didn't have anything to do with the beer aside from the Oktoberfest area. And even that was just like, there weren't German breweries or German styles just happened to be some breweries there. Uh, that, that was interesting. Uh, there was a great, uh, Oompa band that was playing pop classics. They, they were playing, uh, like. I walked. Uh, I, I have a video of the Oompa band playing Lady Gaga's "Bad Romance," which was just. And somebody was singing too. It was just the oh, best no, thing. Man. I I was uh, I was enthralled with that for a while. 
the I, I ran into uh, Teresa Pasuti oh, from cool. uh, Crooked Lane. I, well, I got to have some of her beers and chat with her. I've never actually met her in person until then. Uh, so that that was super cool. So from the the, the session, uh, who she, she's on there quite a bit. Uh, I I ran into Matt Sager. Uh, really a couple uh, the next day, I stopped at a, a Czech brewery on the way back to the airport, and he happened to, to be there, and we were chatting for a bit. Uh, and he and I both kind of agreed the one thing about GABF that wasn't great, you know, they combined Homebrew Con with uh, with GABF this year, which. Uh, According to a couple of folks who are in the organization, they're not doing that again next year. It's going to be just, it, they'll be separate and they'll be different. They had a uh, one evening, I think it was Wednesday night, they had a uh, club night at some brewery in uh, in Denver. They Some people had rented a space and it was kind of small and it was like, you know, 40 bucks to get in. But it's, it's a trivial amount of money if you're going to go to Denver to do something. I, I ended up not going to club night. I was kind of beard out, uh, but a number of people did. Yeah. Uh, but in at GABF, there was a homebrew area, and it was it was sad. I I didn't go in hmm. because there were volunteers. Right, some of the like the professional breweries you had a lot of volunteers that were pouring. Sometimes the actual brewers, uh, which is you know I met Teresa. Uh, you know it's that was cool. In the homebrew area, none of the homebrewers were pouring their own beer. There was almost nobody in this little corral they had set up. Uh, and I think Matt was telling me, I don't I, I you know, Matt, if you're listening, I, I apologize for not remembering the exact details. They had they had a pro am area and the homebrew area. And he had a couple of, of pro am beers that you know with Danville Brewing and, yeah. and people. He the area was broken up into two pieces. And he was not allowed into the second area. But he's like, I brewed the damn beer. I'm the <laughs> pro in the pro-am. And no, I'm sorry. You had to have like a separate homebrew con badge or ticket or something to go back there. And it was just the whole way the, the homebrew was, it was kind of, it was kind of put in the middle of this, this giant area, but there was hardly any signage or anything there that it was any indication that there was any homebrew or anything. And it was just in the sad kind of corral that once you saw it, you're like, I don't want to go in there because that looks nobody's in there. And this is a really crowded area. And that this is nothing good is going to happen in there. So it's, you know, I appreciate, you know, the, the BA has got to like any event you're organizing, especially post COVID. You've got to stay fresh. Eh, You've got post to COVID. get people there. You know, post, you know, whatever. You, 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 uh, I'm always going to I'm always going to say post-vaccine. it. I'm always going to say it. Uh, po- post vaccine, whatever. You know, they had, you know, they had some, they had some fun things to do. They had food trucks. They're trying to, you know, switch it up and be different. And I get that. And you don't want to just do the same event year after year and have it get stale. Uh, yeah. And I, I appreciate that they were, you know, in, in the present environment, trying to save some money and jam those two things together. But it just, I, I don't think it really worked. That's too bad. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. got to be a pain in the butt to, to make yeah. something like that work. It really, oh, yeah. it's got to be. I mean, that's, it, it's especially, you know, uh, COVID is still taking its toll on the service kind of industry. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of breweries shutting down and beer bars shutting down yeah. and a lot of people are in trouble. And it's, you know, it, it, I don't know what it would take. I mean, I do know what it would take, but no one's going to do it. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I get it, and kudos to the BA and whatever for for trying yep. something new. Uh, yep. It sounds like it didn't work, and they realize that, so they're 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 you know yep. keeping up with the with the with the trends with the pace. And yep. uh, I like exactly. That. Yeah, I don't I don't mean to shit on the BA. No, I didn't. I mean think they're you doing the best they can, and I think the GABF part I think was really well executed in a way that brought some new kind of interesting you know some other activities some other stuff you know the selfie thing and all you know kind of keeping it you know trying some different stuff and making it more appealing to people of all of of younger ages as well as just us middle-aged guys but they also (laughs) managed to still have like a lot of a lot of booths tables beer there's no shortage i mean if you tried to sample one of everything uh, every brewery there you would die 
you would physically die before Hell you yeah, finished, dude. just that's, like a normal GABF. That's so, what I want. Again, I, I don't mean I don't mean to be shitting on the BA at all. You're not. They, they did a good job. I don't think you were at all. Don't worry about it. Okay. You're all good. Cool. Well, that's cool, man. It sounds like you had a a great time, and you picked some yeah. winners. It sounds like too. I had a great time. I I look nice. forward to doing it again. Excellent. All right. And Coop, you went on a little uh, judging excursion too. Huh? How did that compare yeah, to was, How did that compare to uh, Shars? This past, this past weekend. Well, it's a it's on a different scale, but it is the biggest competition in California. It uh, you know used to be known as Stern Grove, and this was the the forty sixth annual. They call it CHC, um, and it used to actually be judged in Stern Grove in the park in San Francisco, in this little building there. And I judged it back when. Yeah. Then they moved to Anchor, and uh, but yeah, you used to have parties there for the judges and stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, now they they've been doing it Oak, Oakland United in uh, in Oakland, and um, is that a so beer just, is that a brewery? It's a brewery. Yeah, Oakland United. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, they do a good variety of styles, some lagers, IPAs, this and that, and you know, uh, pretty good beers over there. But we were in their warehouse judging, and they gave up that space for two full weekends for them to judge. So they did a you know, full oh, wow. Saturday and Sunday of judging uh, the last weekend in October, and then they just did the, the final round the first weekend in November. And I was there Saturday and uh, judged all day and uh, got to final some meads, which was fun. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, the, the, then the next day I went back on. Uh, Sunday and did the best of show. So I just, you know, they invited me to do that. And I, I was kind of, had kind of a busy day, so I didn't want to lose my edge. That's a, a buddy coming into town. I'm like, I'll just judge the best of show. And I, I did that at, at uh, NHC also, where I just got up in the morning, judged the best of show. And that was all I did. And it's so much better than when I judge the best of show after judging two sure. or three flights of beers. <laughs> well, oh yeah. my God. Like you can, yeah. your palate is fresh. You're ready to go. You can taste through all the beers, make notes about them, figure out the top, you know, eight or 10 beers. Can you imagine? Kind of like, I'm only going to do the best, the best of this. It's yeah. fine. I sauntered in like five minutes before it starts <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm here. Let's go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, work with some good judges. Uh, you know, Pavel was, was on there. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, but yeah, it was, it was, um, and, and also Paul Kiefer, very great, great judge. Um, <laughs> So we were doing the best of show and we came up with, you know, we listed like 10 beers each that we all liked. And we came, there were like three or four in common and a couple that we had two in common. There was like a, the top, you know, actually just a couple of beers that we had, um, you know, kind of all coalesced around. And then we went and kind of talked about every beer that we liked in the top and the ones where two of us liked them and why didn't the other person. And um, we decided on our, you know, the top, three for us and it was kind of nice because it was kind of unanimous in that the ordering of that and um it turns out uh you know i wanted to look up who who did it uh who got the best of show beer because it was a really interesting beer it was an oatmeal i'm sorry it was a uh uh german chocolate cake stout so it was like a, a oh. spice or vegetable beer and it had toasted coconut in it and all this stuff that you, you know in a okay. german chocolate cake sure and the presentation it was an imperial stout as the base and it was just wonderful beer. And we all voted and unanimously that was our best of show beer. Well, it, it turns out uh, the guy who brewed it is none other than uh, Doug Walker from the Inland Empire Brewers. And he's the one that organized that whole, uh, that whole thing with all the, um, the California Commons that we judged for their club's oh. uh, anniversary. Oh, well, that's awesome. June. So uh, Doug was the guy who organized that whole thing with me. And I talked to him a lot as leading up to that project. So I was really stoked to see his name on there. That's great. Um, another guy, That's Bill awesome. Sawyer, who's been on the show. He got first, uh, you know, best of show for cider. He he sent us like in 2022. I see he sent us like four different uh, New World ciders to taste all at once. We were just like they were all really good. I remember too. We're just like, wow, yeah. this guy knows what he's doing. So yeah, oh was, man, it's good to see the kids nice grow up. You know, his name there. He's you know sent a bunch of beers over from from uh, Georgia, I guess. So. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, um, it was a good experience, and then I got to go hang out with my my friend, and uh, you know, had dinner, played some music, hung out, and it was good. So I had a nice full day, and I, I even got to go for a run that morning. So it was just real. I go, okay, I'm just gonna go do a best of show, do a lot, a lot of other things. Like that. Usually, you do a homework competition, it takes up you yeah, know, why all not? your day, and you just get home kind of uh, and tired and fall asleep. Well, 
yeah, it was um, it was really nice. Doze runs this competition now. They've been doing it for the last uh, four years, I think, and uh, they've been doing a really good job with it. Um, a lot of good prizes, a lot of prize packs for judges. They gave us some, you know, there was like a Russian River beatification in there and T-shirts and all this stuff. So I love good it. Judge prizes. I'm sure you got plenty of good prizes and stuff at at GABF too, but. It's a nice perk when you own judge, you get a like, good lunch, and you get taken care of like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, really good experience. Awesome. That sounds great. How, how's the beer overall? You know, um, the beer overall was, was quite, quite good. I judged the table of um, uh, table five of German, uh, uh, like, uh, Leicht beer and pills and stuff. For the most part, they were, you know, fair to Midland and, and, and like 30, 30 to 30 seven to 38 point beers there was like 140 point beer the oh. odd thing was you know in the best of show there and i won't name the beers but there were three distinctly um diastolated beers in the final like the best of show and we yeah. all got it it was just, just i think that the panel that pushed those forward was just had that you know fortunate or unfortunate trait that they cannot taste uh diastole at, you know, <laughs> yeah. at a reasonable threshold yeah uh so now we're, we're just doing genetic, you know, <laughs> yeah. okay, well you pass the test if you can determine if there's diacetyl in this. <laughs> um, okay. Well, that's cool, man. Good. I'm glad things are, are, are getting better out there. Um, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. We have one more beer to try and I bet you can guess what it is, but it's a little different. It's a German beer. It's not alcoholic. It's a Christmas beer. I'm excited for it. I don't know why. Uh, Because I like torturing. So uh, hang on a second. It's Dr. Homebrew. We'll be right back. Hello, fellow BNers. This is Sully from the 21st Amendment Brewery located in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park. Before Nico and I opened the 21A and before I was a professional brewer, I homebrewed on my small four-burner apartment stove in a back house in Santa Monica, California, making my extract brews before graduating to the daunting idea of all-grain brewing. Homebrew books and information was hard to come by back then. The internet hadn't been invented yet, along with other things we take for granted today, like electricity and potable water. One thing I wish I had back then when I was learning was a radio show that could teach me the ins and outs of brewing and answer questions that I had about homebrewing, a resource for making great craft beer. The 21st Amendment Brewery is excited to be a proud sponsor of Dr. Homebrew, a great show that teaches you what you need to know about making incredible beer. Good stuff. Listen up. You might learn something. I certainly did. And thanks for your support. Tasty Crack Games. The leader in affordable, high-quality kegerators is here. Introducing Comos, the kegerator designed with serious beer drinkers in mind. It features an all-stainless steel draft tower, a major upgrade over traditional chrome-plated brass towers, and Comos keeps your new tower cold with their air-cooled tower fan, wrapping your beer lines in frigid coolness. Your beer is poured from innovative forward-sealing faucets that don't leak, so they stay cleaner for longer. Dual gas inlets on the rear of the fridge allow you to run both CO2 and nitrogen gas. Serve your beer with CO2, serve your kegged wine, or even cocktails with nitrogen. The digital temperature display has the largest range available, allowing you to use the Comos Kegerator for fermentation if you need to. And now Comos Kegerators ship with duo-tight draft fittings for that click-to-connect assembly we've all dreamed of. Buy direct from ComosDraft.com and receive free shipping on your order. That's K-O-M-O-S Draft.com. the examination all right thanks for hanging around everybody we are back for our final beer tasting of the night and it is one that i just picked up at whole foods uh you know don't worry about it just shopping at whole foods it's fine um i like going to whole foods uh for beer and like weird snacks and shit and like that's kind of it you know my um, sister-in-law is a manager at that one in Concord, the Whole Foods 365. Oh, nice. Sweet. So if you ever go there, you know, that's, you know, it's, hey, it's uh, family members working there. Okay, Woo-hoo. there you go. Uh, this is Klosthaler, Santa Klosthaler. Look at this. I have never seen this beer before in my entire life. It's a red bottle. It looks really cute. There's a little cute picture of Santa on it. 
And I'm like, Santa Claus, because I'm like, Claus Teller is non-alcoholic. So I'm like, okay, it's their holiday brew. Do you know how much I love when people call beer brews? Um, it's awesome. That means they're really serious about the process of the product. It's true. Uh, yeah, German limited winter edition. So I, I picked it up. I had to, I had to get it. And uh, but then I'm looking at the label. and I'm going, what makes it? What makes it holiday? Is it, you know what I mean? Is it, is, is it like a, a, some sort of spiced beer, a Munich, Hellas, or whatever? I have no idea. I don't know if you guys looked or not, but I'm curious to see if, I, uh, if, you, if you catch it. Oh, I, I looked all right. Um, <laughs> it is 50% Klaus Toller non-alcoholic malt beverage. Yeah. And 50% cranberry cinnamon drink. <laughs> I love it. It's 50% mm. drink. It's like a it's like a Rattler, I guess. They make. I looked on their website trying to find something about this beverage. Yeah, uh, and it this doesn't appear on the Rodeberger Klaus Toller website at all. This is like this yeah. doesn't even it's not even yeah. there. But there is a Klaus Toller Rattler. Excellent. That 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 might be interesting. And NA Rattler might kind of be a good a good fit of a beverage that's not quite beer, but something that's got a little sweetness to it. Yeah, and they they might if I can find that anywhere when I'm you know, total wine or Whole Foods or whatever, I'll I'll get some for some show in the future. And we'll just we'll do it. Sure, sounds great. Uh, but let's try this beer here. I want to know what you guys think about it. I just had it for the first time. I'm super curious. Um, because like, <laughs> what do you like, like? What do the Germans know? I mean, what are we what are we doing? Why why are we doing this? Gro- I saw this in a grocery store once myself, and I passed it by, but. Uh, <laughs> The German pioneer of NA Brews, limited winter edition. Yeah, it's it's um it's a very nice looking bottle. Yeah, it's cute. I love it. But why couldn't we have just gotten regular cloth seller and mixed it with seven or eight different kinds of drink <laughs> to see which one works best? <laughs> well, because there, there's uh, no hiss when you open this bottle at all. No. Oh. There's some I, head. I get some head. It's what is that? Light amber, light copper in color. Yeah. So it's uh, obviously a spice. It's going for the spiced and fruited winter ale type thing. Let's judge this as a Christmas beer. Yeah, it's very uh, it's very cinnamon forward in the nose. Cinnamon and like uh, orange peel, like almost like a potpourri kind of cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah which you're I, right. I don't mind. It smells and sort of tastes like Cost Plus World Market. <laughs> I mean, it Is does. It, mm-hmm. it, it, like, like Cost Plus used to. Do they still have those, or are they out of business? Who knows, I man? I think That's they're like, gone. But yeah, I, I, I happened to glance at a review on Reddit for this. I didn't mean to, and I'm really afraid. It's <laughs> like when you go in the grocery store and you're by the fruit section, and then there's like those uh, pine cones that are infused with uh, cinnamon scent, and you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm disoriented in a weird, well, delicious way. Me. It um it, it it almost tastes or it smells like um those powdered. Do you guys ever do the powdered spiced cider, spiced apple cider as a kid? Mm. That's no. what it. That's what it smells like. It kind of tastes like that too. It's yeah. just like a powdered. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing natural about it at all. Oh God, no, no. This does. You're right. This tastes like an apple cider. Yeah. It's been spiced up and carbonated. It's cranberry. It's not very sharp cranberry because cranberry is a very acidic fruit. Yeah, it's not. And, it and, not. and I wonder if they add the cranberry for for like dryness, you know, to like dry the dry your mouth out like a like a tartness would. Hmm. I think that the, the spice would be drying the, your mouth more. You know, than it's that. it's sweet. Fruit. It's definitely sweet. Yeah. I, I I don't think this would pass the non-alcoholic test that I kind of like, uh, you know, ascribe to or subscribe to or prescribe to or whatever the word is, where if you could hand me this after a couple of beers, I wouldn't know it was a non-alcoholic beer. This doesn't even taste like a beer. No, this is a great beer for people who don't like beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to be seen at a party drinking out of a bottle because you just are into peer pressure, but you don't like beer, this is the beer for you. It tastes yeah, well, like, a, yeah. no, you know what this is? Non alcoholic cider. 
I think we've we've it's danced like around this, it. Let's just fucking yeah. say it. This is non-alcoholic cider. This is exactly what this is. Spice non-alcoholic cider. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if the cranberry drink has has, you know, sometimes fruit drinks will have an apple base and a little cranberry or, you know, other neutral base fruit bases to water down that super acidic cranberry. It's not pure cranberry juice, I'm sure of that. If it's 50% that, it would, you'd be squinting here. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, wow. Water, sugar, carbon dioxide, natural flavor, acid, citric acid. That doesn't say anything about... Huh. Okay, just natural flavor. So the, the cranberry cinnamon drink is water, sugar, carbon dioxide, natural flavor, acid, citric acid. So... Yeah, it's definitely not even fruit. Two kinds of acid. There's sugar for sure. Yeah, and I wonder what the drink is. Like, what does that even mean? That's what that's what the drink is. It that's describes right. it very very well. So the yeah, I didn't mm. go down. I'm glad you caught that, Brian. I I was I couldn't get past the cranberry cinnamon drink part of the label. The non-alcoholic beer has yeah has malt, hot extract, car, you know, water, carbon dioxide. They don't just list the yeast. God is good, uh, but uh, they do. Then they separately list that that drink. Yeah, that's Man. interesting. The uh, the Reddit review that I had saw yeah. was avoid at all costs unless you're curious what it would taste to drink a drunk elf's puke. I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad either, to be honest. I really don't. I am disappointed that there's no information on their website about it. Huh. On the German language site, there's a photo. There's a photo of a six pack of it, but there's nothing. There's nothing to click to get more information. There's absolutely not. It's just there. Well, there's a fair, fair amount of information on the bottle here, but yeah. Oh, this is it's very drinkable for someone who you know. If you don't want a beer and you just want a a, yep. a, a drink, it's not. Yep. It's you know, fine. Yeah, it's fine. Not unfla- unflavorful. It's just I don't know how to. I wouldn't know how to judge it as a beer. I'd be like, well, this doesn't seem like really like beer at all hardly right you know? and well and so i'm on their their faq page on klostholler.de yeah. and they have a whole you know faq section the first one is how is non-alcoholic beer produced and it says uh, they can be produced using two different methods either the beer is first brewed as an alcoholic beer before the alcohol is removed blah blah, blah or fermentation processes stop before a significant amount of alcohol can form klostholler is being produced with the second method described above why not just say that in the first place? Yeah. Why, why give us the first method to begin with? Because they're German and they want to be thorough. They're not going to yeah. just give us some information. Yeah. They're going to lay the whole thing out. To they're make Germans. Beer. Yes. Yeah. This is how we make ours. Yeah, we produce with second method, yeah. I kid um, because I love. Yeah. No. Um, this is... I don't... Yeah. I don't ahead. hate it. It's just... Yeah, it wasn't what I expected. It, I thought it would be like a phenolic mess and it it's actually the, the the sugar in there gives it a little balance to this if it was just the spice and the dryness of a boss toller it would just be too you know biting and phenolic and harsh but this is palatable it's mm-hmm. you know interesting it's easy to drink <laughs> this brew this beer is brewed yeah. at the dortmunder actien brower i a dab where dortmunder export comes from Oh man, I love that for me. <laughs> um, Personally, yeah, I don't care for regular cloth seller. Uh, you know, no. usually it's sat around so long and it's traveled so poorly. Yeah, that yes. it tastes like cardboard. This doesn't taste like cardboard. It's it, it's it's smoother and more <clears throat> easier to drink. It's it I was brewed uh, in in June, June twelfth of this year. All right, not pack, bad. Packaged anyway, and uh, they say it's good through end of uh, twenty twenty five. I, so. I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to recommend this to people. And I think if you like cider, mm-hmm. it's not cider. You know how some beers can be cidery. That's like a mm-hmm. flaw. That's not what this yes. is, but it's like sweetness without any bitterness. So if you like a sweet cider and you like, um, cinnamon flavoring, this is, this would be a great beer to bring around at a holiday party you have one halfway through or whatever. So you're still, you know, drinking and you're drinking out of the bottle. So you feel like you're partying a little bit. It's not awful. It's not amazing. I feel like this would make a good mixer. If you're going to take like some booze and like put a shot of something in 
and and you know maybe put some fruit in with it yeah. and make a really interesting cocktail it, it could work you could a, yeah. a really good bartender would be able to figure something out to do with this to make it um, a, a winter yeah seasonal maybe, maybe a little rum maybe a cocktail. little bourbon yeah yeah love it all right well that's it that's it for us everybody we knocked out two beers talked about some judging not a bad day if you're tired of hearing about us talking about commercial beers and you want us to get back to homebrew, there's one simple trick, and homebrewers hate this method. What, what is that simple trick that homebrewers hate, it's JP? Method number two, take the alcohol out. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and get a commercial contract. No, it's unfortunately brewers hate to email Brian at thebrewingnetwork.com and, and get on his little watch list. He's like the Santa of homebrewing. Uh, but in reverse, you know what I mean? I usually it's a tithe for Santa. When, yeah. When people email me. Usually. That's, <laughs> most, most of the time. Hell yeah. So email Brian to the bringnetwork.com. Get your asses here. Get your beers on the show. We want to talk to you. We want to drink your beer. We want to help you out. And uh, frankly, we're running out of an alcoholic beer to, to try on the market. So uh, let's go. Help us so out a next, little bit. Next episode, you know, what we got? Commercial beer. That's right. Our next episode, which we're going to record here, if you're listening live uh, in like five minutes, it's uh, our basically our Christmas beer show. We have a bunch of Christmas beers to drink and go through. It'll be a it'll be a hoot and a holler. So check that out. But anyway, Brian at thebrewingnetwork.com. Email him. Get on the show and uh, get famous. I don't know. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, until next time, see you later. <laughs>